Okay, so we've gone ahead and blocked in our initial underpainting in acrylic. And um, for those of you who have watched some of my past videos, I like to start in acrylic and then eventually um, switch my palette to oils. Um, what we're going to focus on though right now is kind of this distant um, mountain. Uh, it's going to be uh, full of trees and shrubbery, uh, but I also want it to have some atmosphere. Um, have a little bit of early morning mist or fog, um, which will really help to set it in the distant background. Um, typically, I'll go through now with oils and start applying um, my, my liquid with some, some dark color and stipple on uh, some texture. Uh, but what I want to show, because I want to continue to stay in acrylic through just this background area, is that I can use the same technique, but in acrylic. Um, the only downfall being that since I'm not using a medium like Liquin, um, it won't be a transparent overlay. So I'm going to have to try to uh, get kind of a darker greenish color um, for our background here uh, in acrylic. But the reason I want to stay in acrylic is because I find that I can achieve um, the effect I'm looking for, that distant atmospheric effect. Uh, in acrylic, and I like acrylic because it it tends to to dull um, and darken uh, several shades darker than when I apply it, uh, but that really helps to kind of dull it out a little bit, and um, and I feel like it, it's a really good effect to keep it sort of in that distance. So we're going to go ahead now, and I'm going to use my tree and texture brush, and we're going to stipple on. Uh, some dark green color. I'll probably just use um, sap green and uh, dioxazine purple as my two colors that I'll use to create that darker tone to stipple on. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so as I mentioned, we're going to go ahead and use our tree and texture brush right here. This is it. And um, I like to try to kind of rough it up a little bit, kind of splay it open um, so that you can get kind of a nice kind of prickly spread out bristles. Kind of want to rough it up a little bit to do that. But um, if you don't have a tree and texture brush like this, this is a really nice brush. It's got natural hair fiber. Um, or bristles. Um, you can find another brush. Uh, here's an example. Just some sort of a smaller or maybe maybe a round brush that you can sort of open up a little bit. Sometimes older brushes help a lot or brushes that haven't been cleaned out all that well to kind of go ahead and dot on this effect. So I'm going to go into my green and some purple. And that'll just create a nice dark, kind of greenish color. And then I kind of want to come back here and kind of start to stipple this on. Just kind of a light touch. You don't really need to press hard. But I want to create, again, a little bit of, of texture here. So we'll fast forward uh, our video so that we can get through this a lot quicker.
Okay, now starting in the background here, um, what we're going to do now is I'm going to take this this flat brush here. This is um, this is a number four flat brush, um, and it's from Royal and Lane Nickel. So cheap little brush I bought it. Um, Hobby Lobby or somewhere like that. But um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the corner of this brush. It's got that nice uh, kind of uh, 90 degree angle on it. And um, I've mixed a pile of sap green and ultramarine blue, a little white. And um, I'm going to come in here now. I'm just going to push a ridge of paint on the end of the brush. And coming back here, I'm just going to use the corner of the brush. And I'm just going to start creating just tiny little, little canopies, just like that. And you want to kind of skip around and kind of build this out just like anything. You're going to build it in clumps. And this will take some time, so you'll need to be definitely patient. That's all there is to it. So we'll kind of start going quick now. We'll fast forward and um, we'll just try to get this going pretty quickly so we can save on some time.
Well, all right then. So I think we've gotten about as far as we want to get with our acrylic paint. So it's time now for us to go ahead and flip to our oil paints. Um, so we got our nice little hazy, um, very foresty mountain range here in the back now. Uh, primarily kind of keeping it more into the lighter blue-green colors um, and light um, sort of grayish tones so that it really helps to uh, be a little cooler, a little more distant, and that's kind of what we are looking for. Um, using an airbrush to kind of help bring in that, um, that atmosphere. Um, you don't need to use the airbrush to do that. Uh, you can certainly achieve that uh, just by applying either lighter colors or you can certainly go into your acrylics or your oil paints for that matter and um, you can very lightly sort of um, dry brush roll it on with a, with a nice uh, dry bristle brush uh, to accomplish that. But uh, I just wanted to uh, use the airbrush. I like to use it from time to time. I think it's a great tool and I can achieve the effects that I'm looking for. So, um, but yeah, again, if you don't have an airbrush, um, you, there's certainly uh, methods for, for applying your, um, your atmosphere, your uh, kind of the foggy effect. I do have some previous videos that do discuss that, uh, but it's really just a dry brush blending technique, very, very small amount of paint on the brush very dry paint, you don't want to use, have very wet paint, um, and then just just rolling it on very gently and smoothly. So now at this point on, um, I want to continue to work the background. We're going to now come in here, we're going to start to focus kind of on this area, uh, this kind of grouping of trees, which is kind of in front of this, of this mountain range here in the back. Um, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and um, we are going to stipple on our stipple on our um, our little dark effects. So again, this is my this is my stipple brush. This is a three eighths of an inch uh, tree and texture brush from series thirty two from Rosemary and Company. Um, you can certainly buy these online, um, and they're very handy. They've got a nice very uh, fine natural bristles that uh, are really spiky and that's what you want to do is have very full splayed spiky head on on your brush. If you don't have one of these brushes there are other brushes that certainly can be used. Uh, for example I can just take an old this is an old round brush. Um, it is really old um, but it has that kind of spikiness at the top. I can sort of fan it out a little bit and open it up. <clears throat> and I can just as easily come through here and dot on my effects with something like this. Uh, the older brushes are really good for this. You can even cut them down a little bit if you need to, to create that effect. So, um, so yeah, I would recommend that if you don't have a tree and texture series brush. So with that, we're going to mix up ourselves a little bit of paint here. We're going to use our, our liquid um, now. And why do we use liquid? Well, liquid, great medium, uh, dries very quickly. Um, that's what I want to have it do is dry fast. Uh, but it also dries transparent. So um, I'm going to mix up a little black. So that would be ivory black. I'm going to mix up a little cerulean blue. Uh, a little bit of um, cad yellow and some and a little bit of uh, of green um, to create a nice dark uh, effect here and and not even have that much yellow in here really but it will be transparent with this which means that this background color that I've put on here this sort of olive greenish color will we'll show through, but it'll also sort of just um, change the change the value of that color as we put that on. So that's what I want to work on now. So let's get started. All right, so a nice little shake here. You don't need a lot of paint, or I'm sorry, a lot of liquid on here. 
uh, a little bit goes a long way. So I typically just get a, a tiny little dab uh, like that, put it on my palette, and uh, it'll be ready to go. All right. All right, so what we're gonna do here is uh, I'm just gonna use my tree and texture brush again. I'm gonna kind of open it up a little bit, get it kind of ready to go. I'm gonna go into this liquid here, and I'm gonna start to mix up kind of mix up our colors. I'm gonna start with, get a little bit of that black. Add some little blue. A little green. And I just want to create a nice kind of darkish color here. And I'm going to come through here and we're going to go ahead and start to, uh, to apply this. I'm not touching very hard. And you just keep going back down and kind of reapplying this. You don't want it too much liquid because you, you don't want it to be too transparent and, and runny. So um, it's kind of good to keep it a little bit more on the uh, on the maybe I'd say 60-40. So we've got the initial kind of underpainting for this now kind of stippled in. Um, and I went through and also kind of added some additional, some additional shadowing um, that uh, I always try to kind of find the little pockets of, pockets of like dark that, uh, that we kind of see there. And now kind of what I want to do is I'm going to take, um, I'm going to take a rigger brush. I want to bring in where I'm kind of seeing a little bit of some, some trunks. So I'm just going to kind of go into mineral spirits and I'm going to go into this black and and I'm gonna, um, I don't have a lot, but there is just a little bit here, kind of like right here. And so this is a really good time just to add this in. Um, we've got a, a few of them right here. This is just a good time to come in here and uh, go ahead and bring those in real quick. There's just a few. All right. So again, the great thing about using the liquid is that it will cause this to dry pretty quick. You're hearing my grandson screaming in the background. I apologize for that. He's 16 months old and he can be a little loud sometimes so all right so we've got that here now what we're going to do is come back here now I want to bring in sort of a, a lighter green so we've got the the background green which was uh, you know what I applied with acrylic that's kind of coming through brought in the stippled uh, darker shades of black and green uh, here and that'll sort of act as our darkest contrast and then 
Now on top of this, I'm gonna go ahead and bring in a green. And what I wanna do, I'm gonna mix up a little pile here. Um, I'm gonna bring in a little white, a little midnight black, some blue. So cerulean blue. Get some of this, um, bring in some cad yellow. And that'll start to make kind of a nice greenish color here. And I'm gonna make it a little bit more yellow. I'm just trying to mix the pile up here on my palette. It's nice just to have this color already kind of pre-mixed and ready to go. And you need quite a, a good little pile of it because um, you want this to apply thicker. So everything underneath right now is kind of done in a thin layer. And now to make this really kind of work, I'm going to bring it in as a uh, kind of a thicker layer. Um, so I'm going to test, I'm going to test this and see if I like it. All right, let's see if I like this color. And I think what I want to do is bring it in just a little lighter. So add some white to kind of change, kind of saturate it a little bit more, kind of lighten it up a little bit. Let me see if this is going to kind of be the color I'm looking for. Yeah, and I kind of like that a little better. Okay, so I'm gonna come through here now and I'm gonna use this tiny little rigger brush. I'm gonna add this on. So we're gonna fast forward on our video so that we can have the magic of time and get this going a lot quicker so we can save some time here. Start fast forwarding now.